How can I disappear behind a sheet of glass? How can you design clothes with a candle? And how can you stop yourself from getting dizzy? I train a matchbox. Gareth. Uh, Carol, do you mean turn a matchbox into a train? No, I don't mean that at all. You can't train a matchbox. A matchbox has no sense, no feeling. It's a bit like Toppy. This matchbox has feeling. Let me introduce you to Malcolm. Hello, Malcolm. Now, I've been training Malcolm for <laughs> minutes now. Really? And Carol, yes, he Carol, has some. That matchbox has got a he headband on. Yes, well, he's been training, hasn't he? Obviously, anybody would know that. I've been training Malcolm to stop when somebody shouts stop. So if you'd like to join in with this little training session, all right, Malcolm, off you go. Stop. 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 Oh, don't you think he's performing magnificently? Yeah, certainly yes, he is. Yes, he is. And do you know why? How and does how? he do it? I thought you'd want to know that. Well, if you open Malcolm up, <laughs> you can see that I've threaded the string through one hole at this end, through another hole at this end, put a match across the bottom, and when I pull the string taut, that acts as a brake on Malcolm, and that's how he stops. Isn't he clever? Years at university have oh, really paid I off. I know, I know, I know. I've got another one here. Would you like to try with this one? Go on, Tommy. Well, yeah, yeah. All right. Try hard with this, all right? All right. Stop. Stop. Stop! Stop! It's not working, Carol. No, that's because this is Michelle, the French matchbox, oh. and she doesn't understand English. You've got to speak to her in French. <laughs> yes, of course you do. But of course, arrêtez. Ah. Ah, allez, arrêtez. Arrêtez, arrêtez allez. Michelle. How oh, marvellous. That is how you can train the matchbox. Thank you. How do you stop your bangers from burning on the barbie, mate? Easy, watch them. Keep them peeled. It's not easy. It's really, really hard. Oh. It is actually very, very difficult. It's an old Antipodean problem, you see, with the barbecue, in that so much as barbecues take a long time to come up to cooking temperature. And what you do is you put your sausages on too early, it comes up to cooking temperature, just as you turn away to offer someone on a plate. There you go, you'll be needing that, sir. And uh, you come back, oh, disaster. The bangers are burnt. Charcoal for dinner again. But there is a solution to this problem now using this particular barbecue. Here, let me just light it up for you. Show off. There you go. Now then, now then. Uh, oh, right. Oh, you'll be needing these, actually, Ben. There you go. So I'm that's ready it. for your bangers now, sir. Hey, how about that? A talking barbecue. Right, now that it's told me that it's ready for my bangers, I should load it up with four. And I'd just like to say at this point that these, of course, are vegetarian bangers. A talking barbecue. How does it work? Well, that's a heat sensor at the front of the barbie there, which is attached to this black box here. When it achieves the correct temperature, which you preset in this box, it will play back a voice telling me that it's ready to cook my bangers on. Right, good idea, huh? Maybe I'll show you something else. How about this for a concept? Um, a saucepan, which will tell you when it's achieved boiling temperature. Now, this would be really useful. Same thing again, just a sensor attached to a black box. It'll say, you know, mm, saucepan is boiling, sir, or something like that. This would be very useful for very busy kitchens where you're trying to cook about five things at the same time, or even blind people would find this very useful indeed. They can't Your monitor. sausages are over-sizzling. They have reached optimum edibility now, sir. What an absolutely wonderful talking barbie, this. It's been programmed to tell me when my sausages are cooked as well, when it's reached absolute finite temperature, and it's a small matter then simply to pop your bangers off and serve them. And the person who invented this machine is 13-year-old Ben Scammell. Ben, what was the inspiration for this system? Burnt bangers on the barbie, of course. Thanks to Ben, that's how you can prevent burnt bangers on your barbie. How can a stick stop a row? Well, it can if it's a tally stick, and a tally stick is simply a very old form of accounting, a very old form of keeping a record of a debt. Mm. For this, I really need a debtor, someone who owes me money. Toppy, you owe me 35 <laughs> pence. Can I have it, please? Um, well, I haven't got it at the minute, Fred. Can I wait you a bit longer? You want to still carry on owing it. OK, but I'd like a record, if you don't mind, of this transaction, because Fine, not mate. that I don't trust you, so I'm going to write this down, T for top, 
O's, F for Fred, 35, 3 long, 3 for the tens, 5 little ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a big P. OK, that's my tally stick. What I do now is I split it in two, like that. You have one half, Toppy. I keep the other. When you're ready to pay me, bring me your half back with the money, and provided the, the two sides tally, then there is really no problem. On the other hand, if when I stick yours against mine, it doesn't quite tally up, then I'll know a little bit of jiggery-pokery has been going on. <laughs> you you but, serious? This is my receipt? That's your receipt. But this isn't much use, surely. I mean, you can't go around well, carrying Well, you great big say sticks. that in actual fact, but this used to be the main system of accounting and tax paying in this country and I have here borrowed from the Museum of London where it's on show an original tally stick that dates back to the year 1695. You can see the Whoa. Latin writing on the front and if I swivel it round slightly you can see the edge along which it was cut. That's the splitting point. And you can see little grooves on it as well. Grooves here, small amounts of money and at the other end down there, larger grooves for larger amounts of money. And that was an original tally stick. And as I say, this used to be the main system of accounting in this country, all the way from the time of William the Conqueror, right up until 1824. And if you owed taxes to the Treasury, they had one half of the tally stick and you had the other. Then they decided they'd stop all this and get much more modern, much more advanced. They'd burn all the tally sticks. Millions of them were kept in, in the House of Lords. They decided to burn them. Two chaps slung them all on a huge furnace, but they'd forgotten. They'd forgotten to clean the House of Lords chimneys. Oh, and the okay. Houses of Parliament burnt down. Oh, oh. But that's how a stick can stop a row, provided, of course, you've got the right bit of stick. Fred, I can't help but notice that tally stick you got there, it's got loads of lines on it. Yeah, this chap, he owes me £35 million. Pounds. <laughs> really? Yeah. You use that then? I forgot to put his name on it. Oh. It's not you, Toppy, is it? No, Fred, not me. How can I disappear behind a sheet of glass? Well, watch this. Now, I have a light on me. If a light's faded up on Gareth, you can see a happy smiling hello. How you doing? Hello. Lovely Gareth. Now, how do we do this? Well, we do it quite simply with two lights and a sheet of glass. You are the other side of the glass to me. There's a light on me. If that light is faded down and the light on Gareth is faded up, then you can see half of me and half of Gareth. And eventually, as the light goes down on me, all you see is Gareth's reflection in the window. All right. Well, let's try this with Fred and a couple of torches. Now, you can try this at home using one person outside, one person inside, especially when it's dark in the evening. Now, I've got the light up on me. Now, Fred, if you'd like to put your torch on... Now, you can see this half-man, half-beast effect. And then if I switch mine off, what do you see? Just Fred's reflection in the glass. Let's try it with all three of us. Very strange indeed. I don't think I suit glasses, do you? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think it makes me look a lot better than usual anyway. <laughs> now, this trick of raising lights up and down either side of a sheet of glass eventually became incorporated into a very famous theatrical performance known as Pepper's Ghost. And to demonstrate Pepper's Ghost in the how-to studio, I shall require two melodramatic, haunting theatrical assistants. Well, Gareth awesome. and Fred, you'll do. Because now you see me, and now... How do you do that? Clever, isn't it? Now I'm back. Let me show you how. Because in between you and I, there is a sheet of glass. And in that, you see my reflection. Because really, I was sitting on a table over here. The light was reflected into the sheet of glass. You saw me behind the sheet of glass over here. And so by raising lights up and down over there, I appeared and disappeared, and that is how I can disappear behind a sheet of glass. Uh, Fred, Gaz, where have, you, where have you gone? Fred? Right. How can you design clothes with a candle? Well, the Javanese from Indonesia use a similar sort of technique to the one I'm going to show you in something they called batik, which is designing fabric with wax. They produce something like that. Well, it's not bad, but I want to take the whole thing 
a little bit further, a little bit more sophisticated. Mm. Now, supposing you want to redesign a favourite T-shirt, you mm. want to put something yeah. really ornate on it, yeah. let me show you how to do it. Imagine this is my T-shirt and I want a fish on it. So I've drawn, as it were, mapped out the outline of the fish in cellotape. Yes. Very basic fish. A very basic fish. Yes. I'm a very basic man. Now we come to the wax and our lighted candle. Now do be careful if you're doing this because wax is dodgy and so are candles. A nice big dot there for his eye mm. and then lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of little dots for the scales. But do be careful. OK, yeah. so you are left. Eyes, he's got two eyes, that one. But this one's only got one eye. You're left with something very much like that. Now comes another exciting bit. And you paint your fish all over. Well, absolutely over the, wax. over the wax. Do you need any special paint for that, then? Yeah, you must use fabric paint. As many colours as you like. Needn't be too artistic or ornate about it. No, Get no. it all over, <laughs> just as you that. want to. And then pull off the sellotape all round the fish. Yeah. OK, so you are left... While it's still wet, yeah? While it's still wet, if you want to. Yeah. yeah. It's going well for us. It's going very well so far. Yeah. You're left with your fishy like that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, again, wait for him to dry. Just get them off my finger. And you're left with that. With the blocks. Okay? Mm. So that's dried. Now, another exciting bit. We move across to the ironing board. There's our fish. Here's our iron. Put a bit of kitchen roll on top and apply quite a hot iron. Now what happens here is the iron will melt the wax mm. which will in turn be absorbed by the kitchen roll mm. and you are then left with something really dramatic oh. <laughs> Very good. which looks Very good. Like that. that lifts the wax off. It Red lifts tink. the wax off and taking the whole thing one stage further here's one I prepared earlier. Nice, isn't it? Yes, quite For good you, though. Fred, that's yes, very good. Very good for me. Yes. Come over here, because look at the other things you can do using exactly the same technique. And that's how you design clothes with a candle. And if you want to know about this how, or indeed any of the hows in the whole series, why not send off for the how booklet? It's absolutely free of charge. Here's the address. It's how to. P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME14 5LL. How to, P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME14 5 L L. How do you stop yourself from getting dizzy? Well, this is one technique that you sometimes see ballet dancers using, and this system called spotting, keeping your eye fixed on one point for as long as you possibly can, is supposed to stop you from getting dizzy. And it works reasonably well, but not perfectly. Now, why do you actually get dizzy? Well, it's all got to do with your ear. Not the hearing, but the other function of your ear, which is balance deep within your ear, are three semicircular canals. Here's an ear. There's the semicircular canals, right? And now I've got actually got a model of these for you to see, made up of three tubes. How do they actually work? Well, if I tip my head forward, watch what happens. And inside my ear, this happens too. The fluid stays in the same place when I tip forward. If I tip to the side like that, the fluid stays in this one the same place. And if I return it round like that, the fluid there stays in the same place. Now, inside these tubes are cilia, little hairs, which re recognise the fluid passing over them. Now, that tells you the position of your head. It's a good system, but it can be confused. Look at this. Now then, imagine this to be the horizontal semicircular tube, OK? And what happens when I rotate it? Watch what happens. The fluid starts turning round inside there, brushing the cilia to one side, telling me that I'm moving. But if I stop it quickly, watch what happens. The fluid carries on and pushes the cilia around the other way. My brain thinks I'm spinning in the opposite direction. My eyes tell me I'm not spinning at all and I get dizzy. Now, lots of people have to cope with being dizzy, but people who have to cope with dizzy being dizzy most are roller skaters, like Karina Haylett. Karina? How do you stop yourself from getting dizzy? I don't usually. I learn to cope with it. You learn to cope with it. What do you do then? Well, after a long spin, I usually try and rotate the other way. And that helps, does spin. it? Yeah. Yeah, but there's no way you can actually stop yourself from getting dizzy I in don't the first think so. place. All right. Thank you very much indeed. And that answers the how. There is no way to stop yourself from getting dizzy. But this is my patent system for getting very dizzy. Head forward, back of the neck, and there, spin round. Fred, Carol! Yes? You can't uh, stop yourself from getting dizzy. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 because I've got a game here. See the target? Yes. I want you two to get dizzy, and when I say stop, run towards the target as best you can. So, Izzy Wizzy, let's get dizzy. Off we go, off we go. Faster, 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 fa
Over here, boys, over here. <laughs> and that's how for now.